Um, whenever you're ready, can you explain what all this stuff is doing? So, this looks fancy. It's not part of my project except for functioning as a MIDI output. So the only thing I'm getting from that keyboard are these two channels. One is high, one's low, and it's uh, it. I hoped it would follow standard MIDI protocol. That uh, didn't turn out to be the case. So what we really get here is I just lower the signal via these diodes. Uh -huh. Thank you for that. Um, toss that into a UART input, um, which then gets parsed by the Pico, depending on whatever signal it receives here. We choose a different frequency to output via PWM. Um, I've also got a UR transmission line just to the computer so I can tell when it thinks a note is on or a note is off. Um, I can also see what the UR signature is for each of these notes. Yeah. Um, one funny bug is that like these notes are the same thing. They have the same signature, at least to however my yeah. UR reads it. So that made it, I sadly just decided to do these notes, ignoring these for fear of overlap. And then these also started overlapping already, so. Cool. So just to make sure I understand here, when you press a key, something like a MIDI output comes out of this connection, mm -hmm. which you are Drop the voltage. dropping the voltage and you warding. interpreting the output as like a UART character. Mm -hmm. And, and, sequence. and for a subset of these keys, there's a unique character associated with mm -hmm. the key. So then you're taking that character and synthesizing a tone right. based on it. Okay. So the, the pattern I found is something like it goes up 32 on the first byte for every one you go up here. And uh, for each octave you go up, it goes up f like four or something on the second byte. Okay. And then that nature of just adding even numbers, I think, is what creates my overlap issue. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so effectively, this is your synthesizer. Mm -hmm. And you've hacked this to make this the user input to yeah. that synthesizer. Yeah. It's really interesting. Cool. Now, I've got a couple modes. This one, dead right now, is supposed to be DDS. This is like funky PWM. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so this one, I've just lowered the uh, duty cycle so it's more harmonic. And, yeah. Uh, we got two PWM outputs stacked on this one. So you might notice this one is lower, higher frequency, just because it's... So you're toggling modes with that key? Yeah, because I couldn't yeah. make it do anything nice. <laughs> that is really interesting. Yeah, my, my hope was to get polyphony working, but with the way that the MIDI is read, any note off that I have will turn off any note that's on. So it sounds nice if I... But then I release one and everything's off. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That is really cool. That's our failed DDS. That's awesome. <laughs> really cool. And the, um, the frequencies that are synthesized by means of PWM when you press a certain note, do those frequencies match the the key that you're pressing? Yeah, they should. I went on you know, Wikipedia and just hard-coded the seven or eight whatever <coughs> sure. notes I'm using. I also have an octave uh, parameter that I can multiply. Strangely, if I set that down to like two octaves down, these start getting weird and I think it's because the PWM can't handle a frequency that's that low or something. Hmm. Like they uh, they start getting really high for no reason. Strange. Interesting. But right now we've got octave changes oh, that don't mess with it. the 16 bit register yeah. is going back to it. So. Awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Thank you. I got. 